are you a farmer? Let's see what private corporations say in the Senate when they take your land. You have gone to court to seize the land from Missouri farmers. You're a private corporation, aren't you? Yes, we are, sir. But how much money are you making on this? I'd have to get back to you on that. Would you? I'm really curious because, you know, you've got Missouri farmers who, in many cases, these are small family farms. These are not massive corporate farmers. They, this land has been in their family for generations. They just want to be left alone and be able to farm. And you're a major corporation who's coming in here and taking them to court, literally, to take their land. And then the benefit they get from it is nothing, nothing for the state of Missouri. And you talk about the national good, so your message to them is, give us a big, rich corporation your land, or we'll take it from you, and you should just live with it. Thank you. Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to the witnesses for being here. Ms. Speaks-Bachman, if I could start with you. Your company, Invenergy, is planning a, a high-voltage transmission line across my state called the Grain Belt Express. You're familiar with this, I'm sure. I am, sir. As I understand it, this, this line, if built, would carry electricity from western Kansas to Indiana. It would cut across, right across the state of Missouri, 200 miles from west to east, eight counties, and cover hundreds and hundreds of farms. I understand you're also now proposing a second transmission line called the Tiger Connector Line, which would run north and south. Uh, from uh, Monroe County down to Callaway County, farmers in my state have expressed a lot of concern with the Grain Belt Express and the use, your company's use of eminent domain. So let me just give you a chance to say what your response is to farmers and, and rural homeowners in my state who don't want transmission lines running over their farms, preventing them from planting crops or having their land taken from them for corporate use. Sir, thank you for the question. I, I would say that community engagement is first and foremost in our mind when we're developing any type of project. Um, and in addition, what we are thinking about is what is the necessity to make sure that lights stay on and that we can improve the reliability and resilience of these communities as well as across these communities, from one to the others. And that's why we find it very important that we look toward uh, a, a, the larger view of what is necessary in the communities, but then at the state level, and what is in the national interest. And that's why we are continuing to work with communities to make sure that they are, um, uh, that, that they are understand what we're doing and that they give us feedback as to how we should develop these projects responsibly. You say the lights stay on. Are, are lights going to stay on in the state of Missouri? From this project, my understanding is, as originally planned, the transmission line wouldn't benefit the residents of Missouri at all. Light staying on uh, across the entire country. We're talking about. Not but you're taking Missourians' land. land. I'm sorry. You're taking Missourians' land from them. And we are. And you've gone to court. Your company has gone to court, and sued Missouri farmers to take away their land. Now, this isn't speculative. I mean, you've actually use this corporate power, which frankly I'm not sure you should have, to seize land from Missouri farmers that's been in their families for generations. Well, sir, I would, I would actually say that I think about um, we would have power that would go into, into communities in Missouri. So I, I would just, I, I'm happy That's to the new Tiger Connector line. So after, after it was pointed out that your original Grain Belt Express did nothing for the state of Missouri, then you came back and said, well, we'll, we'll add something more. So what, what commitments are you going to give the farmers and residents of Missouri today that they'll actually benefit from this land grab? Yes, sir. Um, since we, as Invenergy, have taken over this project, we have done uh, an inordinate amount of community engagement. We will continue to do direct community engagement. Uh, this project did not start with us, but we took it took it on, and we took it on with the with the objective to make sure that the communities are. Uh, well spoken to and well heard from in order to make sure... What are they going to get? Are, there, are Missouri farmers and residents, are they going to get lower energy prices out of this? Are they, what, what are, how are they going to benefit? You're, you're putting a huge transmission line across 200 miles of land in the state of Missouri. You have gone to court to seize the land from Missouri farmers. You're a private corporation, aren't you? Yes, we are, sir. But how much money are you making on this? I'd have to get back to you on that. Would you? I'm really curious because... You know, you've got Missouri farmers who, in many cases, these are small family farms. These are not massive corporate farmers. 
They, this land has been in their family for generations. They just want to be left alone and be able to farm. And you're a major corporation who's coming in here and taking them to court literally to take their land. And then the benefit they get from it is nothing, nothing for the state of Missouri. And you talk about the national good. So your message to them is give us a big, rich corporation, your land, or we'll take it from you. And you should just live with it. Sir, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that that's not the message that we're trying to... That that's what they're hearing. Um, and I would say that since we did take it, since Invenergy took over this project, we have, we have changed direction of the, of, the, of the project. We've changed the path of the project to suit the community's needs and the community's demands. So will you pledge not to exercise eminent domain in the state of Missouri? I, I am not, I'm not authorized to, to... That's a no. I'm not authorized to make that commitment, but I will certainly get back to you. You know, that I think would be the kind, if you want to talk about rebuilding trust here, I think if you as a, as a corporation would say, you know what, we're not going to take your land from you. You talk about outreach to the community and, and benefits to the community. Why don't we start with, we won't take your property. Again, I'm, I'm not, it's not clear to me why you as a corporation should have the power to seize their property. I don't think you should. That apparently, that decision's been made, and I guess you do. But uh, I would just say, if, if you want to rebuild some trust, number one, why don't you show something for the state of Missouri, for the residents there, that you're going to do for them? And number two, why don't you pledge to them that you won't take them to court to take away their land so that they can continue to farm and raise their families and have their livelihood? I'm sure you still find a way to make lots of money. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You. Senator Hawley, you're recognized for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Badal, is, is that how I say your name, by the way? How it is, yes. Badal, Thank you. Okay. Thanks for being here today. Um, are you familiar with the Grain Belt Express? I am, yes, sir. Um, tell us about it. The Grain Belt Express is a transmission line crossing uh, Kansas and Missouri. Uh, it is currently in the NEPA phase uh, with a draft environmental impact statement, I think targeted for towards the end of this year, the beginning of next year, uh, with the Department of Energy as the lead agency. And it sought FAST 41 coverage from my agency in February of this year. 542 miles of, of overhead high voltage lines that will cut right across the state of Missouri. You've designated it, you've given it FAST 41 approval, is that correct? Well, we have, it is a FAST 41 covered project, yes. So what will the effect of that be, the FAST 41 designation? So FAST 41 is a procedural statute that helps bring the agencies who have permitting actions together. It establishes a permitting timetable to provide predictability and transparency to the public as to what the actions are necessary for the project to seek approval and actually get to construction. So we have developed a permitting timetable for that project and posted it to the permitting dashboard. And as uh, we, we will maintain uh, active project management of the timetable to ensure that we are meeting permitting deadlines. Here's what you said upon approving the Grain Belt Express for FAST 41 status. Grain Belt Express exemplifies the type of transformative transmission projects capable of delivering, delivering the triple play of affordability, grid reliability, and more domestic renewable energy production. Are, are you aware that the Grain Belt Express is highly controversial in the state of Missouri and vociferously opposed by farmers in my state. I am aware that there is a local opposition to the project, yes. Yeah, to put it mildly, why is it a good idea to go over the heads of the people of Missouri and give this expressway, which is being developed by a private company that's making probably billions of dollars on it as they take farmers' land, why is that a good idea? Well, Senator, we do not have uh, actual discretion uh, for projects that seek FAST 41 coverage. So it was not uh, a decision on my part actually to grant coverage. If a project is, meets the criteria as defined in statute and they seek FAST 41 coverage, we are obligated to extend that coverage to the project uh, independent of the, the individual merits of the project. Don't you think that it is, don't you think that it's kind of incredible that this private company in Venergy that is responsible now for Greenbelt Express, that is making boatloads of money on it, that is taking farmers' land in my state without compensating them. Here's how bad it was, Mr. Badal, in the state of Missouri. Invenergy was refusing to negotiate with farmers, refusing to give them fair market value, using the power of eminent domain. I emphasize this is a private corporation that is doing this. So bad that the Missouri State Legislature had to step in and pass special legislation to require, require the company to compensate farmers fairly for the land that they were taking. All of this 
And the state of Missouri still gets, originally we were going to get no benefit from the Grain Belt Expressway. Zero, no power was going to flow to Missourians. It was going to come across our land, take our farmer's land, give the money to this private corporation, and we were going to get zilch. What strikes me is farmers have opposed this for years. Farmers have been trying to get a hearing for years. Farmers have been trying to get anybody to listen to their concerns. And this private corporation in Vinergy, which by the way has sat right where you're sitting, and testified about how wonderful this program is, although they can never quite remember how much money they're going to make on it. It's a lot. They get whatever they want. When they come to you, boom, they get their designation. When they go to FERC, they get their designation. It's amazing. Every federal agency is bending over backwards to give this private corporation everything they want. And working farmers in my state and working people in my state who live on the land, maybe have lived on the land for generations, eking out a living, they can't get anything. They can't even get compensated for their land. And this corporation is making billions. And you're telling me there's just nothing you can do about it? We do not influence the decision-making process for the project. So it's not a decision at all on your part? I mean, you, you, you just, you just, you're just a rubber stamp. Well, we don't approve any projects. We don't issue so the any The Fast purpose. 41 is just, you're, you're just saying that that's just merely a what? That's just an administrative designation? I mean, you don't have anything it to is. do with it? It is an administrative So what's the permitting council do then? You don't review applications? You don't, you don't, when you make the designation, what, does an algorithm do it? If a project meets the criteria for a covered project, meaning it is subject to NEPA. Who reviews whether it meets the covered criteria? I do. Oh, okay, so you do make a determination. I make a determination that it meets the criteria. And the minimum criteria is that it has $200 million investment subject to NEPA and multiple federal approvals. That project meets that criteria. Uh -huh. So you, there is a decision-making process. You're part of it. You've, you've approved this. I, listen, I mean, I, this is the same story that we get every time, and that, frankly, farmers and workers in my state get every time. It's always that, sorry, there's nothing we can do. The corporation can get whatever it wants. Want to take the land? Fine, go for it. Want to designate this as a high transmission zone? Fine, go for it. Fast 41? Absolutely, we'd be happy to do it. But farmers are told, oh, you have concerns? <laughs> there's just no place for you to be heard. And now you're telling me that you just didn't have any discretion in it. There's, you're just a functionary. The corporation can just get whatever it wants. Maybe that is the law. I doubt it. If it is, it needs to be changed. But I'm just here to tell you on behalf of the people of my state, I think it's outrageous that a private corporation can take this kind of land. We're talking about a massive corridor right across the central part of Missouri. We're talking about taking land from farmers from whose families it has been for generations. These are not corporate farmers. These are small family farmers. They live on this land. They don't hire lobbyists. They don't appear before your agency, clearly. They don't have any voice, obviously. And they're just told, you just got to suck it up and take it. I just have a problem with that. I mean, I just think it's ridiculous. And frankly, if, if, if you don't have any discretion and your agency doesn't have any discretion, I question why you exist. I mean, if, if you really just are rubber stamping whatever comes before you, let's just shut down your council and replace you with a computer algorithm if you don't have any discretion. I mean, I just think this is ridiculous. I think the whole thing is ridiculous. And I think the idea that a private corporation can leverage the laws of the United States and every piece of the federal government in order to get what it wants and make billions off the people of Missouri when they're getting no benefit is ridiculous. And it is why the people of this country hate their government so much and suspect it. And they have every reason to do so. I just think the whole thing is ridiculous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.